part of the most recent downturn in the first part of this, uh, this year uh, was due to natural disasters, floods in the Midwest, earthquakes in Japan, the nuclear meltdown, um, and uh, a spike in oil prices, uh, all of which have run their course and are now you know, starting to pass behind us. So it gives us a little hope going down the road that we can reaccelerate uh, in the second half of this year um, back up to a two, two and a half percent rate of growth. The problem in the longer run and the problem for jobs on, uh, you know, uh, the Labor Day discussion is that that growth just simply isn't fast enough. But what that means is that if you want to get back to your potential rate of growth, if you, if you want to get back to your long run unemployment rates, you got to grow above your potential rate of GDP. I mean, we'd have to grow at about 4.5%, 4.5% to 5% for two to three years to get the unemployment rate going down from 9% to the 6% level that, uh, or 5.5% level that most economists believe is our full employment level. So, you know, nothing is new here. I mean, I hear again and again and again about the disassociation between growth and jobs. There is no disassociation between growth and jobs, okay? The problem is we don't have enough growth. And when you don't grow at or above your long run rate of uh, a potential rate of growth, you don't create jobs. And when you look at the components of the economy that are holding us back, I mean, 70% of our economy is consumption. We're not seeing a whole lot of it. The economy will not get back to above potential performance consistently above potential performance until we see that housing market bottom out and start to come back. I think that is the, is the key. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of policy that can be devoted to that that doesn't get prohibitively expensive and at the same time pick a lot of winners and losers. Summarize the forecast quickly. Consumption, 70% of the economy, we expect it to get back to around 2%. So that gives you about 1.4% growth GDP points. Um, you're picking up 10% growth or so in investment, it's 10% of the economy, so you pick up about one GDP point there. Trade's a wash, so you're looking at two, two and a half percent as kind of what you can achieve in your, in your growth. That's the, kind of the base forecast, and then you work off some of the, the, the more um, uh, marginal issues to drive it up a little bit or down a little bit. But that's why I don't see growth getting back up much above two, two and a quarter, because you kind of look, well, where are you going to get it from? Uh, and the, the pieces aren't there. Now, when the housing comes back a little bit more, you'll see consumption come back a little bit more. We'll get consumption up to three or three and a half percent. Gives you a much better underpinning to build on. Business inventories are low. You'll see businesses invest more. That'll give you a little bit more out of the investment side. So that's how you kind of build your forecast. It's in bits and pieces. Um, and right now, uh, what we're seeing is, is very, very tepid growth all across the front. And if you focus on creating jobs and not focus on creating growth, you're not going to be successful. It just doesn't work that way. You can create growth without jobs because you have productivity improvements. But you can't create jobs without growth because the growth has got to be fast enough to outstrip the productivity improvements so that the businesses can't meet their demand just with productivity increases, and therefore they have to hire. And that's what drives the hiring process. Everybody says, when are businesses going to hire? When they don't meet the demand, when they're losing customers to their competition because they're not producing enough goods and services. And right now that isn't happening. They're meeting the demand, more than meeting the demand, with their existing workforce. That's why the productivity numbers are going up even while the GDP numbers are going down.